Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Borgy, and this is going to be a top five mouse list of uh, spring 2021. And I'm not going to lie, I did not want to make this list um, because there haven't been many releases. So the list is pretty similar to the one I made in the winter. Um, but I saw BT's video and I was like, man, I should probably make a top five list. Um, so it's not really like high effort. Just going to get right into it. At number five, I have the HyperX Pulse Fire Haste. And in my last list, the Pulse Fire Haste was actually at number one. But as I used it more, I did realize it has some flaws that keep it from being like a perfect mouse, but still a really good deal. Um, it does have TTC gold switches, which are like some of the best. And I'm really happy they aren't using Omrons. It's like pretty nice to see from a major company. Um, the original mouse mouse feet were decent, not the best. Um, and I replaced them with core pads. But the sensor, um, there's a lot of DPI deviation and it's weird. Um, it's like the higher DPI you go, like the more significant it is um it's using a 3335 sensor the lod does seem to be a bit high and the hyperx software is terrible um so those are kind of like unfortunate but everything else about the mouse is really good it has one of the best stock cables aside from like the end game gear xm1 cables the side buttons are honestly really good in terms of like quality um they don't have like met much pre-travel the feel is all right for a side button um, it's 60 grams and the build quality is for the most part good like there's no side flexing there is a lot of creaking down here and I'll do like a sound test like man what a noise what a noise that that piece of plastic is producing um, but that's not like a major QC issue the buttons have no pre or post travel and all around it's a solid mouse for the price but it's not like perfect compared to like some of them I'm gonna get into also, it is an FK inspired shape, but it is pretty wide, which is one of the reasons I like it. But if you do have small and narrow hands, it might not be for you. And at number four, it's kind of awkward. I want to put the Deluxe M800 because I do think that this is honestly a top tier mouse. And it's only $45 for a wireless Viper Mini inspired shape. And you can watch my original reviews. This is honestly like a complete hidden gem. But after I made my videos, it completely sold out and hasn't restocked on Amazon. So I'm not like really confident to put it like as a top four mouse if it's not going to fucking be consistently stocked. But I just really want to like bring attention to it because if a mouse like this can exist for $45, why is the Model O wireless 80? Like realistically, this has kill 4.0 switches, which are like it's marginal, but they are more expensive. Like 3370 sensors are basically just reskin 3335s. Like what features does the Model O wireless have that drive it up like over double the price? And this is already being considered like a truly like top tier wireless mouse, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I guess at number four, I'll talk about like the Viper Ultimate and the Model O Wireless. These are, in my opinion, the best, like somewhat affordable, like under a hundred dollar wireless mice. Um, you guys know that I just can't stand the side grips and the right hand side buttons on the Viper Ultimate, um, but I do think that it is a very high quality mouse in general. And the V2 optical switches are great. Um, I don't love the shape, I don't think the shape is really the best for a lot of people, which is why I find it so weird how many like tech reviews viewers push like the viper family um but hey maybe that's just me and the model o wireless is by no means a terrible mouse i mean i did get a defective copy you know fucking classic glorious qc um but i do think it is highly overrated uh, minecraft kids they're they're just too vast um they care only about the mouse's software and its ability to double click and i i don't even know is the model o wireless like really exclusively good for that um seems like there's plenty of other mice that are able to do it but i'm not i'm not getting into the minecraft realm uh fuck number three number three oh yeah um when I was thinking about what mouse to put at number three, I realized that there's two types of people in the world. You either like the G203 egg shape or you like the Viper Mini. Um, they're both extremely similarly priced. Um, I think they're both at $30 right now. Obviously, my hype Hello Kitty Viper Mini is like twice the cost because I'm just fucking cool and rich. Um, and some people, egg shape is either love or hate, and this mouse is way heavier, coming in at, I believe, 85 grams. Um, it does feel very solid, and the weight is, like, perfectly distributed, but if you want the lighter mouse, um, just go with the Viper Mini. It's the best budget, small, lightweight mouse, and I just, I don't know if that's gonna change, because cheap mice just don't come out anymore. Am I the only person realizing that?
And on both of the mice, the stock cables are pretty shit, which is why I have both of them paracorded. I would recommend doing that, but of course, you can just get a bungee and the experience will be passable, um, but it won't be like comparable to wireless. And this is honestly kind of derailed from a top five list. There's some more small mice that I want to talk about. I don't want to not include them. The Extrify M42, pretty trash out of the box, just with a bad stock cable. Um, but once you change that out, it's a lot better. Sadly, it uses Omron 20 amps, and they just don't feel good whatsoever. Um, like, I just don't care what other reviewers say. And the Hot ES Wired. Um, I did not include the Hot ES Wireless on this list. For one, um, I, my copy was garbage. And for two, the mouse just has not ever like been available after the pre-order so it's like hey g-wolves what are you doing and also the hot ES wired in my opinion is just better it's significantly lighter than the wireless and literally so much cheaper like when the hot ES wireless does become available i think it's going to be 130 us dollars which is a fucking that is far too much money for a g-wolves mouse um g-wolves qc is of course going to be iffy um and also i would recommend changing out the cable to really make the mouse feel a lot lighter but it is sub 50 grams, one of the best small shapes in my opinion. Um, and yeah, it has kill 8.0 switches now. But yeah, a lot of you guys know I had used the Hot ES Wired as my main for a long time, and I really do think it's one of the best shapes out there for both claw and fingertip. Um, I wish it was on Amazon US. That would make it a lot easier to recommend. The stock feet are great. And uh, yeah, I just think it's a lot better in the Hot ES Wireless. I don't even know what this was. This became like a weird small mouse roundup. And at number two, I have the Endgame Gear XM1R. If you've watched any of my videos, you probably know that I'm a fan of this mouse. I've loved it since the original XM1 V2, and the XM1R is even better. I know that people are pretty pissed at Endgame for just re-releasing the XM1 so much, but they really are trying to perfect it, and they're getting pretty close in terms of features. As a 3370 now, um, I honestly don't know if it feels better than the 3389. Um, everything about it does feel good, though. Um, it has the best clicks, in my opinion opinion on any like standard mouse and it's it's just insane how premium they are for the price point which is $60 people have been saying it's 70 um like where I think that's the um X1 RGB that costs 70 Endgame is also known for basically having the best stock cables on any wired mice, and uh, that is honestly just the case. If I wanted this mouse paracorded, it uh, would be, but but it's not, so that really just says something. Uh, my side button has this like weird, like crunchy, like weird creakiness. I'm I'm not a fan of it. Um, that's probably the biggest flaw in my mouse. The overall build quality, um, in with my like entire history of Endgame gear mice has been impeccable. These have like truly solid builds. There's no like button quality issues even over like long periods of time i've been using this mouse for months it's really just one of the best um if you watch like all of my top five lists i always shill the end game gear mice they're pretty fucking sick but they don't have good availability that's probably their one issue they just need to fucking tell the factories to make more mice and I don't know if I really recommend the shape for fingertip, but if you have large hands, you can definitely pull it off. That's what I did for most of my time on the mouse, but it's also amazing for claw grip. If you have medium to large hands, keep in mind, it is a wider mouse, um, and it has really low button height. I just think it's a great mouse um, overall. And at number one, to no surprise, is the G Pro X Super Light. I was thinking, I was about to grab a troll mouse, and I was like, it's not even fucking worth it. Literally everybody knows that this is my number one mouse. Um, do I even have to explain why? And I'm not going to lie, I would strongly recommend watching my XM1R versus Super Light video, legit from like five days ago or something, comparing those mice, it'll be better in the rest of this video. Uh, but the Super Light, it is $150, that is the elephant in the room. Do you want to pay that much for a mouse? If the answer, if you're hesitant to answer that question, you can probably just get one of the mice I've mentioned um, in on this like top five list, whatever, and be happy with it. Um, but in my opinion, trying every mouse on the market, like a literal mouse addict, fiend i think that the super light is the best um i have put core pads on it and i do think that that truly helps over the stock fee especially once they like wear down and uh, at 60 grams with the perfect weight balancing like watch any review of this mouse weight balancing gets mentioned um that is for good reason and it, nothing really compares to the way it feels in hand and I feel like every person who complains about USB-C just legit doesn't have the mouse because if you have the mouse, there is zero shot you'd complain because I've legit charged this mouse seven times since I got it in December 
does that make much sense to anybody seven times and it's still like fucking 18 percent now like what i've literally like i have a tally for when i charge it um so yeah i just have to talk about the USB-C every time because that's just so stupid uh, but yeah that's gonna be all for his top five list didn't really put much effort into it these are what i believe to be the top mice um it was like more of a roundup of like the good mice on the market pre-final mouse revolution oh my god um but yeah leave a like and sub peace